हेलो फ्रेंड्स हाउ आर यू आई होप यू ऑल माइड बी वेरी वेल फ्रॉम टुडे आई विल बी टीचिंग सब्जेक्ट ऑफ सर्वेइंग आई विल बी कवरिंग ऑल द टॉपिक्स दैट आर दैट कम इन द कॉम्पिटेटिव एग्जाम्स लाइक गेट ई एस सी एस एस सी जे एंड अदर इंजीनियरिंग एग्जाम्स लाइक आई पेट सो टुडे आई विल बी टीचिंग यू सम बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ सर्वेइंग सो दर्स्टली द क्वेश्चन अराइजेज वट इज सर्वेइंग See, surveying is the science and art of determining the relative positions of various points above, on, or below the surface of the Earth. The relative positions are determined by measuring horizontal distances, vertical distances that are called as elevations, horizontal angles, as well as vertical angles, accurately using various surveying instruments. So, this was the definition of surveying, which you all might be knowing. Now, coming to the objects. of surveying objects of surveying so the main objects of surveying are first is to take measurements to determine the relative positions of the existing features on or near the ground second one is to lay out or to mark the position of the proposed structure on the ground and third object is to determine areas volumes and other related quantities so this was all about the objects of surveying now we will start with primary divisions of surveying there are basically two primary divisions of surveying one is plain surveying and another is geodetic surveying now we will study one by one now coming to plain surveying plain surveying it is a type of surveying in which the curvature of the earth is neglected and it is assumed to be a flat surface all distance and horizontal angles are assumed to be projected onto a horizontal plane now the question arises what is what is a horizontal plane a horizontal plane at a point is a plane which is perpendicular to the vertical line at that point now what is the vertical line the vertical line is indicated by a freely suspended plumb bob from this diagram you can see that if this is a uh, earth this is the surface of the earth there these are two points on the surface of earth one point is a and another is b see if i drop a plumb line it will pass through the uh, it uh, it will pass through the center of earth so this line ac and line bc these will be called as a vertical lines and if we talk about the horizontal line if we draw tangent at point a and point b respectively we will get the respected respective horizontal lines at a and b respectively so a horizontal plane may be shown as this which is perpendicular to the vertical line passing through it and similarly in this uh, uh, for this vertical line a horizontal plane may be drawn as this so now the important question arises that on at which places we can use plane surveying and on which places we can use geodetic surveying see plane surveying can be safely used when one is concerned with small portions of the earth surface and the areas involved are less than 250 square kilometers so this is the first main important point to be considered secondly if the difference between the arc distance of 18.5 km on the surface of earth and the corresponding chord distance this should be less than 10 mm then and then only we can use plane survey thirdly the difference between the sum of the angles of a spherical triangle having an area of 200 square kilometer on the earth surface and that of the corresponding angles of the plane triangle is only one second see if this is the earth surface if this is the earth surface and these are the spherical lines and from these spherical lines i have made a spherical triangle this abc this is shown as like this abc and a plane triangle is also drawn in between it abc let this be a dash b dash c dash so the difference of sum of angles of spherical triangle and sum of angles of plane triangle should be one second so this is third criteria so this was all about plane surveying now coming to geodetic surveying what is geodetic surveying Geodetic surveying is a type of surveying in which the curvature of Earth is taken into consideration, and a very high standard of accuracy is maintained. Now, the main object of geodetic surveying is to determine the precise location of a system of widely spaced points on the surface of the 
earth the points so located are used as control stations of the primary surveys then the secondary surveys of less precision are connected through these control stations see by geodetic surveying the earth's major axis as well as minor axis are computed accurately and a spheroid of reference is visualized you can see this is the spheroid the spheroid is a mathematical surface obtained by revolving an ellipse around the earth's polar axis now the earth's mean sea level surface which is perpendicular to the direction of gravity at every point is represented by a geoid because of variation in the earth's mass distribution the surface of the geoid is irregular as you can see from the diagram <coughs> however if the irregularities of the surface are neglected the geoid can be very closely approximated as spheroid so if we neglect these irregularities uh, geoid can be considered as spheroid now thus an imaginary surface representing mean sea level extending over the entire surface of the earth is represented by a spheroid so this was all about geodetic surveying and plane surveying now we will start with functional classification of surveying or simply you can say classification of surveying so see classification of surveying is done on the basis of various categories so starting with the first category that is the nature of the field of survey so as per this category the surveying may be classified into three types first is land survey second is marine survey and third is astronomical survey now we will discuss the land survey land survey is further uh, land survey first of all what is land survey it involves a measurement of various objects on land uh, these can be further classified as topographical survey cadastral survey and city survey now what is topographical survey this type of survey consists of measurement of various points to plot natural features such as rivers streams lakes hills and forests as well as man made features like roads railways towns villages and canals so this is all about topographical survey now coming to cadastral survey it is one of the important types of surveys of land survey these surveys are used for making boundaries of municipalities states etc the surveys made to mark mark properties of individuals also come under this category now third one is city survey the surveys made in connection with the construction of streets water supply and sewage lines fall under this category so this was all about land survey now coming to marine survey or hydrological survey as the name suggests marine or hydrographic survey these are the surveys conducted to find the depth of water at various points and bodies of water like sea river and lakes like sea river lakes so one thing should be noted here that finding the depth of water at specified points is known as sounding this is an important term now coming to the second category of classification that is classification based on object of surveying so on the basis of object of surveying the surveys may be classified as engineering survey then military survey mine survey geological survey and archaeological survey so we will start with engineering survey what is engineering survey the objective of this type of surveying is to collect data for designing roads railways irrigation water supply and sewage disposal projects now engineering surveys are further subdivided as reconnaissance preliminary and location now what is reconnaissance reconnaissance is the survey for determining feasibility and estimation of the scheme what is preliminary survey it is used for collecting more information to estimate the cost of the project located and location survey as the name suggests is used to set the work on the ground now coming to military survey military survey is a type of survey which is meant for working out points of strategic importance third one is mine survey this is used for exploring mineral wealth fourth one is uh, geological survey that survey is used for finding different strata in the earth crust and last is archaeological survey the survey is used for unearthing relics of antiquity you must note this term relics of antiquity so coming to third category of classification that is classification based on instruments used as the name suggests this type of surveying includes 
चेन सर्वे कंपस सर्वे प्लेन टेबल सर्वे थर्ड लाइट सर्वे देन टेक्योमेट्रिक सर्वे मॉडर्न सर्वे यूजिंग इलेक्ट्रॉनिक इक्विपमेंट्स लाइक ईडीएम्स दैट आर इलेक्ट्रॉनिक डिस्टेंस मीटर्स एंड टोटल एंड टोटल स्टेशन एंड लास्ट इज फोटोग्राफिक एंड एरियल सर्वे सी दीज टाइप्स ऑफ क्लास दीज टाइप्स ऑफ सर्वे आई विल बी डिस्कसिंग इन फर्दर लेक्चर्स आई विल नॉट डिस्कस दैम हियर नाउ द लास्ट कैटेगरी ऑफ क्लासिफिकेशन इज बेस्ड ऑन द मेथड्स एम्प्लॉयड सी ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ मेथड्स एम्प्लॉयड द सर्विंग इज ऑफ टू टाइप्स फर्स्ट इज ट्राइंगुलेशन सेकेंड वन इज ट्रेवर्सिंग नाउ वट इज ट्राइंगुलेशन इन ट्राइंगुलेशन कंट्रोल पॉइंट आर एस्टेब्लिश थ्रू अ नेटवर्क ऑफ ट्राइंगल्स दैट मीन्स यू डिवाइड द होल एरिया इन टू अ नेटवर्क ऑफ ट्राइंगल्स एंड परफॉर्म द सर्वे वर्क नाउ वट इज ट्रेवर्सिंग इन द स्कीम ऑफ एस्टेब्लिशिंग कंट्रोल पॉइंट दिस कंट्रोल पॉइंट कंसिस्ट ऑफ अ सीरीज ऑफ कनेक्टेड पॉइंट एस्टेब्लिश थ्रू लीनियर एंड एंगुलर मेजरमेंट्स linear and angular measurements if the last line if the last line meets the first line or starting point starting point of first line then it is called as close travels and if they do not meet then it is called as open travels so this was all about the functional classification of surveying now we will move on to an important topic that is principles of surveying there are only two principles of surveying first one is working from whole to part remember this whole to part and second one is extra care in fixing positions of two control points so this is these two are the important principles of surveying now see from uh, first one is working from whole to part while we survey large areas a system of control points are identified and they are located with high precision then secondary control points are located using less precise methods with respect to secondary control points details of the localized areas are measured and plotted so this is called working from whole to part this principle in surveying helps in localizing the errors if the surveying is carried out by adding localized areas areas then errors accumulate so if we work from part to whole it leads to the accumulation of errors and the whole survey work will be in vain so this was working from whole to part second one is extra care in fixing positions of two control points see for fixing new control points with respect to the already fixed points at least two independent processes should be followed for example if e a and b are all two already located control points and with respect to them new control point c is to be located apart from the minimum two measurements so one more reading should be taken so there are uh, different methods of doing this see a and b are already known points or stations and c we have to find we can either uh, perform chainage from a and b to direct directly to c we will get the point c or we can uh, use the method of offsetting third is taking the bearings method of bearings from only one point fourth method is taking bearings from both points a and b and finding the point c and last method is taking bearing from one point and chainage from another point so this was the second principle of surveying so these principles are very important as far as surveying is concerned now this was all about today's lecture hope you might have enjoyed it now we will be discussing some important numericals which have come in uh, gate and esc hope you will like to solve them now the first question is this question came in gate 2008 it was a one mark question the question says the type of surveying in which curvature of earth is taken into account is called the options are geodetic surveying plane surveying preliminary surveying topographical surveying so as i already told you when curvature of earth is taken into account that type of surveying is called as geodetic surveying second question is also from gate 2014 set to one mark question the question says the survey carried out to delineate natural features such as hills rivers forests and man made features such as towns villages buildings roads transmission lines and canals is classified as option 1 is engineering survey 
after that is geological survey uh, then land survey and fourth one is topographical survey so as i taught you uh, this comes in the category of topographical survey now third question says which of the following statements is false first one plumb line is along the direction of gravity we know it is correct mean sea level is used as a reference surface for establishing the horizontal control third one is mean sea level is a simplification of geoid i already told you this so this one is correct geoid is an equipotential surface of gravity this one is also correct so the odd one out is option b so option b is false mean sea level is used as a reference surface for establishing the horizontal control see remember mean sea level is used as a reference surface for establishing the vertical control not horizontal control so these were some numericals or previous year questions not numericals previous year questions from gate now we will see some previous year questions from esc esc in the year 2015 the question was consider the following statements the general principles of surveying are first one is to work from part to whole second is to locate a new station by measurements from at least two fixed reference points already established and slash or identifiable which of the above statements are correct option a one only option b two only option c both one and two and option d neither one nor two we know that the first principle of surveying is to work from whole to part not from part to whole so first part is wrong second is to locate a new station by measurements from at least two fixed reference points already established and slash or add so this principle of surveying is correct so we go with the option b two only now second question is also from esc it is a match the following type question so question says match list 1 that is type of survey with list 2 purpose and select the correct answer using the code codes given below the list so here is a list 1 it shows a b c d a says topographical survey b is reconnaissance survey c is cadastral survey d is archaeological survey and list 2 includes their functions so first says to determine boundaries of the fields or houses etc second says to find relics of antiquity third says to determine natural features of a country and fourth says to determine possibility and rough cost of the surveying system to be adopted now we <laughs> we already discussed what is topographical survey it is used to determine natural features of a country so a goes with the option 3 reconnaissance survey it is used to determine possibility and rough cost of the surveying system to be adopted so reconnaissance survey is matched with the option 4 now cadastral survey as i discussed it is used to determine the boundaries of the fields or houses so c goes with the option 1 and d is archaeological survey it is used to find the relics of antiquity so our option goes with a answer goes with the option a a3 b4 c1 and d2 so these were some previous year questions i hope you might have enjoyed these now i'll start a new topic that is scale of a map and rf factor you can say scale and rf factor scale of a map now you all might be familiar with scale what is a scale so scale is nothing but it is just a representation on a map it is not possible and also not desirable to make maps to full scale all distances are reduced by fixed proportion and drawings are made so the scale of a map or the drawing is the fixed proportion which every distance on the map bears to the corresponding distance on the ground thus if 1 mm of paper uh, on the paper represents 1 meter on the ground see if 1 mm on paper or map represents how much how many meters if this represents 1 meter on the ground then we can say that the scale is 1 is to 
वन एम एम इज टू वन मीटर वन मीटर वी कैन से और वी कैन से स्केल इज वन एम एम इज टू हंड्रेड सेंटीमीटर और वी कैन से वन एम एम इज टू थाउजेंड एम एम और सिंपली वी कैन राइट इट एज वन इज टू थाउजेंड सो दिस इज द स्केल ऑफ अ मैप नाउ टू रिप्रेजेंट द स्केल ऑफ अ मैप वी यूज द टर्म रिप्रेजेंटेटिव फैक्टर रिप्रेजेंटेटिव फैक्टर सो वट इज रिप्रेजेंटेटिव फैक्टर इट इज नथिंग बट इट इज इफ आई राइट द फॉर्मूला ऑफ रिप्रेजेंटेटिव फैक्टर देन इट इज इंडिकेटेड बाय द रेशो रिप्रेजेंटेटिव फैक्टर आर एफ रिप्रेजेंटेटिव फैक्टर सो न्यूमेरिकली रिप्रेजेंटेटिव फैक्टर इज डिफाइंड एज द रेशियो ऑफ डिस्टेंस ऑन मैप टू द कॉरेस्पॉन्डिंग डिस्टेंस ऑन ग्राउंड और यू कैन से मैप डिस्टेंस ऑफ ऑन ग्राउंड डिस्टेंस सो द रेशियो ऑफ मैप डिस्टेंस एंड ग्राउंड डिस्टेंस इज कॉल्ड एज रिप्रेजेंटेटिव फैक्टर और सिंपली आर एफ सो If one centimeter is equal to fifty centimeter, if we are using scale of scale is given as one centimeter is to fifty meter, so its R F factor will be map distance. This is the map distance one centimeter upon ground is ground distance is fifty meter. So on uh, changing the units we get. One centimeter by fifty into hundred, which gives one by five thousand. So RF factor of the scale will be one is one by five thousand, or simply you can say one is to five thousand. So this is all about RF factor, as you can see. Now. there are different types of scale one is plane scale another is diagonal scale usually we are concerned with plane scale see actually there are three types of scales first is engineer scale another is representative fraction and third one is graphical scale you might know all of these now i i will be moving uh, to a new topic and after that we will close today's lecture that errors due to shrinkage of a map what is this errors due to shrinkage of map see maps may undergo a lot of uh, temperature changes or uh, other changes due to which Uh, a lot of error uh, due to which uh, uh, it causes stretching or shrinkage of the map so we are here dealing with the shrinkage of the map so due to shrinkage what happens the drawing paper paper generally shrinks due to the variation in the atmospheric temperature humidity etc so consequently or the lines marked on the map shrink to some extent thus the lines measured from the map after shrinkage of map are not the correct distances see if a graphical scale had also been drawn on the map the correct distances can be measured using that scale this point should be noted what if a graphical scale had also been drawn on the map the correct distances can be measured using that scale now in the absence of a graphical scale the correct distances distance can be measured like this see shrunk representative factor or rf give is equal to original representative factor into shrinkage factor thus you can say that correct distance
is given as major distance upon shrinkage factor shrinkage factor or uh, in terms of area correct area is equal to measured area upon shrinkage factor square square of shrinkage factor so these are two most important formulas for calculating the correct distance or correct area due to uh, due to error in error due to shrinkage of map see actually what happens uh, here is uh, I, uh, actual formula is shrunk scale after shrinkage of map the shrunk scale is equal to original scale into shrinkage factor so the ratio of the shrunk length to the actual length is known as the shrinkage factor or the shrinkage ratio what is shrinkage factor or shrinkage ratio this is equal to the ratio of shrunk length to actual length upon actual length so this is the definition of shrinkage factor so this was uh, all about uh, shrink errors due to shrinkage of map and this is all about today's yeah. lecture so i'm closing here for today's lecture hope you might, might have liked this uh, lecture if you like this lecture then uh, please like this video and subscribe the bell button okay goodbye